concealed carry gun update. I am carrying a different pistol right now and I thought I'd share it with you. My name is Julie Golub and I'm a pro shooter sharing a passion for shooting sports and safe, responsible gun ownership. I'm currently in recovery mode from shoulder surgery and the repair of a full tear on my dominant arm. And I thought it would be a great time to share my current CCW choices with you and why. Full disclosure here, shooting is my job thanks to the support of wonderful sponsors and the gear that you will see in this video is, you guessed it, sponsored gear. You can check out the description for more details and links if you like, but I wanted to be upfront and honest with you in that regard. My normal carry pistol is a four inch Shield Plus in nine millimeter, but post-surgery, I've opted to switch to a bigger handgun, a Smith & Wesson M&B Compact in nine millimeter. And in this video, I wanna share my thoughts on why I made the switch. Now, first, I can't say enough how much I love my Shield Plus. Everything about this pistol is maximized for the smallest package with the most rounds possible. Now that does translate to tighter feeling controls like the slide stop and a heavier recoil spring, which is harder for me to manipulate right now. The mags are also harder to seat, especially when they are at max capacity. Being so optimized, I've needed to reevaluate if it's the best choice for me right now. I have two M&P M2.0 compacts in my safe. Both have curved triggers. One is optics ready with an ambi thumb safety and the other has stock sights with no thumb safety. I do like the 1911 style thumb safety and I have a lot of experience with engaging and deactivating it with my strong hand thanks to competition, but I don't wanna take the chance that I might not successfully deactivate this safety when I need to during the draw with one hand. I also decided against the optics ready version because I'm not able to shoot this very much. And considering my training is all left-handed and weak-handed, losing the dot could be a very real problem for me. People, myself included, tend to have a harder time finding the dot with shooting with just one hand, especially the weak hand. So ultimately I chose the iron sights option with no thumb safety. I have toyed with the idea of switching to a red dot on my carry gun, and I have an RMRCC that I've considered having direct milled to the slide of a Shield Plus, but if I do go that route, I may switch from my four inch to a 3.1 inch Shield Plus. A red dot negates the need for that longer sight radius, and a shorter slide would be slightly more comfortable for me to carry. Before I delve into the compact, I did seriously consider one other option, the Smith & Wesson Equalizer. If you're not familiar with this one, I have an entire video on it, but basically think Shield Easy meets Shield Plus. It has a 15 plus one magazine capacity with this longest mag. It's nice, it has a slim size, and of course it's very, very easy to manipulate, and that is huge, huge for me at the moment. But ultimately, what made me decide against it was the lack of holsters. I really wish there were more options out there for this pistol, especially for appendix carry, my preferred mode of carry. I'll discuss it more in a future video on what Filster Enigma I've chosen and why. Though the overall size of my shield and compact are similar, the compact is much thicker and the balance is different, both in hand and also when I carry it on the body. When it comes to concealment, this may seem like a minor thing, but minor differences in dimensions can make a huge difference in my ability to conceal easily. Generally, the smaller and lighter you are, the harder it is to be able to conceal a larger firearm. The compact is 25.9 ounces, has a height of five inches and a width of 1.16 inches. The four inch shield plus is 23.8 ounces, the width is 1.1 inches and the height is 4.6 inches. As I mentioned before, the differences in dimensions might seem so small, but when it comes to comfortably concealing, even the smallest increase can be very noticeable. The good news is that as part of my recovery, loose fitting clothes not only make it easier to dress around the shoulder, but they make it even easier to conceal too. So clothing is not a major compromise for me right now. 
Some things are the same between these two pistols. Both are striker fired, have polymer frames, and are chambered in 9mm. They perform extremely well with my chosen carry ammo, Federal Premium 147 grain HST. The capacity of these two pistols, similar. My shield is 13 plus 1 with a standard extension, and though I could go with a longer magazine, a 15 rounder that comes with a new equalizer, I do find, though, that the grip becomes very long with this mag and is much, much harder to conceal, even with loose clothing. The compact mag is flush fit and has a 15 plus 1 capacity. I really like having the extra two rounds because reloads are a major challenge for me right now. And for the longest time, we're against doctor's orders with the weight and the motions involved with it. I also like that I can use a 17 or 23 rounder for home defense when I'm not carrying the pistol concealed. I use the small palm swell sizes on my M&Ps, the ones that offer the different grips. And as you can see, the grip is large enough in my hands so there's no need for an extension for it to feel comfortable. I also really like the grip texture and it's especially helpful shooting one-handed. And I know there are folks who feel it is just too much texture. I have an article up on Smith & Wesson's blog called Concealed Carry and the Art of Layering that goes into base layers. Right now I wear t-shirts and tanks as a barrier, but I've also carried this without them and I don't find it to be too rough, even on the softer skin around my waist. As far as performance, though smaller than a full-size M&P, the compact shoots very much like a full-size gun. Let's say I was all healed up. I feel I could go shoot a match with this compact and though I prefer a five inch gun, I'd still be able to perform well with it. Bigger pistols tend to be easier to shoot better and I do find that is the case here. Choosing a firearm to carry can be honestly overwhelming, especially when there are so many options just in the nine millimeter polymer frame market. Normally a compact is just too big for me to comfortably carry. I don't even consider it. But being able to shoot it better, manipulate the controls easier, and the capacity that I get from it make it my first choice as I heal. To recap on how I came to the decision of what is the best pistol for me right now, first, I looked at my personal strengths and my limitations. For me, knowing I'm only able to shoot one-handed and that my ability to manipulate controls and reload is compromised, I needed a firearm that I can use and shoot now. So, controls. I examined my current abilities and honestly assessed whether I would be able to activate or deactivate the firearm's controls. Competency. I thought about the guns that are easier to shoot with just one hand, with a comfortable grip, suitable texture, and heft to make them feel like a much larger pistol, especially helpful when controlling recoil. Capacity. I considered how many rounds a gun could hold and my ability to reload or do so quickly. Concealment. I thought about how much gun I could comfortably carry with the clothing I'm wearing now. Sights. Red dot versus irons, the big debate, right? I decided ultimately on iron sights as the best route. And because of that, looked at options with just a little bit more length to make it easier to shoot better. Gear and accessories. Beyond the firearm itself, I considered other gear, specifically holster options for CCW that I prefer. When you're deciding on a firearm, these considerations are a great place to start to help you at least narrow down your choices for concealed carry. I hope you found the video useful, and as always, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them below, and if you think this video may be helpful or useful for someone special in your life, please share it with them too. Like if you liked, subscribe if you don't want to miss a future video, and until the next one, live your life fully loaded.